Monster. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Quarantine Hogstar Show, because we're going to just keep using that joke until we're all free. Um, it's not really is... much of a joke at this point. No, I don't know. I, not my best joke. We, we need Sean back. Where's Sean Conti? We need him yeah, back. Yeah, well, he, he, he decided he didn't want to do podcasts anymore. I don't know what <laughs> he's doing with this time. Um, anyway, it's Alex with you, of course. Steve Thomas with me. Um... No Jamal today either. Again, not sure where he is. Where are people if you're not in your house right now? Uh, but we have a guest again because, like we've told you, we want to have somebody on every week until the draft. Our guest is one of our go-to guys every offseason before the draft, and it's Steve Shoup. He helped create the fanspeak.com on-the-clock mock draft website, which every year seems to grow by about three or four things. On that website, we were talking before the show. You've added NBA drafts. You're working on NHL drafts. Uh, you, you've added in more algorithms and stuff. I'm sure in the back end that we don't want to know about. <laughs> but Steve, welcome back to the show. Ah, oh, thanks for having me on, guys. Always good to talk draft. Yeah, and uh, we should say, Steve not only is a massive computer genius who creates these kind of websites, he's a huge Redskins fan. He's actually here wearing Redskins gear right now on the show. So uh, we're excited to talk some Redskins draft with you, Steve. Um, yeah. At, yeah. Absolutely. Diehard Redskins fan, born and bred. Uh, yeah. I don't know pain. if everybody knows that. You know, that's we're trying to get that out there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, I feel I feel your pain. Yeah. <laughs> before well, we get started, and... before we get started, though, Steve, explain to me because I've never understood this. I think I asked this last year, but I want to get it out again. What is the difference between the classic and difficult algorithm? What 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 does it really do on the on the clock simulator? Uh, for the for the regular portion, it it differentiates um, the value of the team needs and and uh, how that. Uh, higher or lower connects with curiosity. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. What was Does that? it make team need higher or lower in the value? Um, it, it prioritizes the the higher team needs more than the lower ones, gotcha. and uh, it also places greater weight on where a player is on the big board versus the team need. So there's a an algorithm how that uh, combines, and then when it comes to trades, it will make trade offers a little tougher. Um, for the premium edition. Right, that's in the premium. And then you also have, like I said, you've added in the NBA and the NHL. Uh, we yeah. were talking beforehand, probably not going to get into MLB <laughs> anytime soon. Um, probably not. <laughs> probably not, no. Uh, and you've got, of course, the off-season simulator, too, which is one of my favorite things to hit up, like, right at week 17. I, I do it, like, four <laughs> times at week 17, then I'm done. You know, that's probably one of my personal favorites on that side. Yeah, Alex is always talking about the off-season yeah, <laughs> simulator. Yeah. yeah, I love that simulator. Uh, I, and you get really nerdy when you do that, and then you do a, a draft, and, you know, it, it's like playing yeah, Madden, except for you don't for play you. the games. I've got a news flash for you, Alex. We're really nerdy for doing this period, yeah, okay? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into some draft stuff. Yeah, let's How do that. that? Uh, Steve, you asked... Uh, or I'm going to say oh, yeah. Steve, and I'm going to say Shoop, just to make this easier for everybody. Okay. Uh, Steve, you, you did a poll on the draft. Let's get into that with Shoop here. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we always do our poll. And, of course, this week the poll is on the draft because we've got such a great gra- draft guest here. Um, and we're going to talk about round one here in a minute. But um, the, the poll was about what do we do after round one? Mm-hmm. And, Steve, how we do this is uh, we polled our listeners – and we gave them a bunch of options, and so we'll have you give your opinion on the options, and then guess what you think. What do you think the fans think? Because that's that's always fun. Because sometimes the fans' guesses are just way out out of left field. So that's always fun. So the the the, dra- the poll question today is: What do you think the Redskins' draft priority should be after round one? And the choices were offensive line, uh, wide receiver, running back, tight end, playmaker, playmaker in that group, defensive back, or uh, BPA because needs are irrelevant. Those are the four choices. Just to give you an example, we'll let Alex go first with yeah. this, um, uh, and then Steve will follow up with you. Well, I'm so Alex. Say... What is your opinion, and then what do you think the fans think? Okay, so I'm my opinion is right now, and this is assuming we're you know not picking till three dash two. Right. Yeah. 
I'm gonna say for me personally, I would I would go need more. Uh, even though I, I hate saying that, I would probably go for that best available offensive tackle. Okay. He's there. Um, but because fans are fans, they're gonna say BPA because yeah, you know BPA at PON is still a thing for our. That's league. like the group think robot thing to yeah, say. Yeah. yeah. Steve, your opinion uh, about it, and what do you think the fans would have thought would have voted on this? Uh, I. You know, I, I like the call of offense tackle. I think I personally would go wide receiver just because I think it's such a deep class. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to have a typical top 50 guy fall to that that uh, second overall pick in the third round. And uh, But I'm going to say the fans definitely did not say wide receiver, and they probably said offensive line. Okay. Um, if it were me, I'd vote for offensive line because I just – how can you not? I mean, you know, it's pretty much a crisis at left tackle in my view. You're the also fans, a Redskins fan, and we love linemen, you know. Well, yeah, true. Yeah. Um, so the fans, uh, you know, are with Alex. or Alex knows the fans rather. They voted, you know, best player available. Needs are irrelevant by a vote of 34%. It was actually really close, though, uh, Shoop. Um, they voted for the playmaker, but it was second place, 33%. Mm. Amazingly enough, I, yeah, I would have been with you. Offensive line was 27%, and nobody cared about DB at all. Uh, only 6% uh, said DB. And so that was the poll this week. We'll skip comments. Usually we read some comments. We'll skip that because we've got a lot of stuff to do today. Right. Um, but that was the poll. And so that kind of starts me on my big – tell you what, let, let, let's do the obvious question first. The Redskins are at 2 is it Chase Young or Bust, or is there somebody else at two that they could even consider drafting, or is this a trade only? You know, they have to trade scenario. What what do the Redskins need to do it to? Well, uh, there is no easy answer because honestly, all three are viable. Chase Young is he the best non quarterback prospect in this class? Yes. Is he the only elite? non-quarterback prospect in this class no so you have completely relevant options such as uh jeffrey akuda the corner from ohio state you have isaiah simmons the linebacker from uh clemson or you could go offensive tackle i think tristan Wirfs and jedrick willis wills are uh both in that elite plug and play left tackle franchise left tackle Mm -hmm. uh situation so they would in any other draft class those are completely viable number two overall pick options um and and then i think you have the weight of can we trade back to say five or six ideally dolphins or chargers pick up a bunch of other assets this year next if it's the dolphins they have plenty of assets this year and fill multiple of these needs and really jump this rebuild and give you know ron rivera the talent he needs, and also give the supporting cast to Dwayne Haskins to see if he's a franchise quarterback. So, you know, it, all three are, are completely viable and realistic options. I think, unfortunately, in Redskins Nation, it becomes the whole dig your dig your feet in the ground and say it's Chase Young or Bus or definitely trade back. Both make this team better. It's just one um, probably gives you more outs, to use a poker term, mm. Um because, you know, if you trade back, you can still get an elite talent and you're getting all these other assets. If that elite talent happens to get injured or doesn't play as well as you expect, you still have those other other picks. So, you know, that from a safety standpoint, from a um, an asset standpoint, is the quote unquote no brainer. But Chase Young is an elite player and people should not be disappointed if he's a Redskin. Um, so, I mean, we kind of talked about some trade options uh, or at least two partners. What do you think some uh, realistic trades are going to be, if any, are offered? Uh, I mean, I, I think everyone in the Redskins world, we, we all want Miami, just, you know, because. But are, are there other options that you think could, you know, present themselves that would be realistic? Well, first let me address Miami. I think, I think not only does everyone want Miami because they have all these picks, and, and it's also the immediate – where if you trade with the Chargers, your next first-round pick, you get, you know, even if you get one and two this year, you're getting a first next year. And who knows, maybe the Chargers go on the run and that ends up being a the 25th overall pick or likely not. But, you know, the, I mean, that's the, the real reality that can happen when you trade for future assets. Um, but the other thing to remember with Miami is since they have so many assets, not just this year, but next year, uh, with all these trades that they've made, they're probably more willing to move up and more willing to you know, kind of up the ante because they could trade the 18th overall pick 
one of their second rounders this year and say, you know, a, a third next year, and they'd still have a full draft class plus that, you know, extra first round pick at the end of the, the round from the Texans. So, you know, they're obviously in a great position. Um, outside of Miami, I do think the Chargers make a lot of sense. We, we see that they've not upgraded the quarterback position. They are a team, um, tough to say where they're going, but it's a team that needs clearly needs an identity. They wanted Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. They don't have a fan base in L.A. They're competing with the Rams, who just went to the Super Bowl two years ago. Uh, they're you know, going to be entering this new stadium, you know, adding a big-name franchise quarterback prospect like Atua um, is a great way to get a fan base. So yeah. you know, I think that makes sense from that perspective. You also look at potentially the Jaguars, who have extra picks this year and next year uh, from like their Jalen Ramsey and some of their other trades. You know, they might be saying they're willing to ride with Minshew mania in Jacksonville, but are they really? I mean, is that if they had the chance to move up and get a franchise quarterback, are they really going to stick with the seventh rounder or sixth, seventh rounder? No, you know, he he did fine for a late late round rookie, but nobody I don't think anybody legitimately expects him to be a franchise caliber quarterback. So those are the two most likely. I mean, the Chargers are saying with a straight face that they're going to they're happy with Tyrod Taylor. I just can't believe for the reasons you stated that management would really, really want to do that. I don't you think know, it's when they're that straight of a face at this point, <laughs> I mean, I guess they have to. I mean, they're not going to say, gee, we're disappointed that we only have Tyrod Taylor. Right. They, I yeah. guess they can't say that out loud. But yeah, I think any of those, you know, any of those. Um, now, I've been excoriated on almost a daily basis on Twitter and on, you know, on our website within the comments and everything. Because uh, outside of offensive tackle, which I love that, I'm a huge Isaiah Simmons fan. I think the dude, what a beast this guy is. I don't think you know, I, I think created for being an Isaiah Simmons fan. <laughs> I'm saying, well, for, yeah. for 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 saying they ought to aim for Simmons over Young is right. why people beat me up over it. I, personally, I think Simmons could make a much bigger impact on the Redskins as a defense than could Young. So tell me, I'm right or wrong? <laughs> well, from a from a, a need and what they bring to the table in 2020, I think you're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, before I get into what makes Isaiah Simmons great, I do want to, I think fans need to acknowledge the one good thing about the Redskins, not only their defense, but the team in general, is their pass rush. They were, I think, fifth in the league last year in sacks. If you look at the pressure rate that's cited on um, – uh, uh, pro football reference. I think they were third in the league. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this is this is with a rookie Montez Sweat and Ryan Kerrigan, who clearly did not have his best year, but was better than most people give him credit for. And he missed four games. So if they were able to amass those types of pressure numbers in that situations, and let's not forget, not a lot of teams were passing, especially late in the game against the Redskins, because they were ahead already. A lot of teams. When you look at the end of the year, a lot of teams who rack up the sacks, rack up the pressure rates, teams like the 49ers, you know, Seahawks, Steelers, Ravens, all these teams in the past, usually they're good teams because they're facing pass after pass after pass to when a team's trying to play catch up. So they just put all their best pass rushers on the field and unleash the fury. That's something the Redskins couldn't do. They, they faced way more running plays uh, late in the game in those types of situations than your typical team that finishes high in these pass rushing stats. So uh, I think the other thing we need to remember is Montez Sweat was playing way out of position. He was in coverage almost 20% of the time. Sure. How much was how much was Bosa in coverage? 1.5% of the time. That just shows the difference in how the defenses were used and these guys to the strength. Let's not forget Montez Sweat absolutely blew up the combine last year. You look at his combine numbers for his size, his strength and speed. I mean, he was off the charts. He has the potential to be an impact, you know, 10 to 15 sack a year type of guy. And Chase is Chase Young probably, you know, a little better as a prospect coming out? Sure. But there's no reason that Sweat can't be a perennial pro bowl or all pro guy. And finally, going back to Kerrigan, yes, he's getting into his 30s. But this is a guy who's missed four games in his entire career. And he his three previous seasons, all, you know, pro bowl seasons, his pass rush numbers were top 10 in the league if you look at pressures plus sacks especially compared to the number of pass rushes he's doing because let's not forget 
he's in coverage 10 to 15 percent of the time uh now you have these guys they're going to be rushing 95 to 98 percent of the time that's exactly what you want you get your best pass rushers on the field you get those guys in the middle getting upfield this team's going to produce 40 50 sacks without chase young not that chase young can't make them better and not that he's not a great prospect, but this team is should have no problems getting after the quarterback. So saying all that about the Redskins' pass rush, what Isaiah Simmons brings is he brings Ron Rivera his Luke Keekley, a guy who can blitz, a guy who can cover, a guy who stops the run, a guy who has instincts off the charts. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, he's just so athletic. The Redskins are in a division with Evan Ingram, Zach Ertz, and Dallas Goddard. I mean, the Eagles have two of the most desk pass-catching athletic tight ends in the league, who can, do the Redskins have to run with these guys? I think the last three years, the Redskins, in terms of total yards given up to tight ends, are rank in the bottom three. Not the bottom third, the bottom three, all three seasons, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So you need a guy who can stop that. I mean, does Landon Collins help that some? Sure, but you, you could use a guy like Isaiah Simmons to just take those tight ends away. And not to mention... These teams have athletic backs. I mean, we all seen what Saquon Barkley can do out of the backfield. Ezekiel Elliott, the Cowboys don't necessarily need to throw to him as much now that they have Tony Pollard. Uh, but, I mean, these are athletic backs who can catch the ball out of the backfield. You need linebackers who can cover them as well. Again, Simmons is your guy. He's your eraser uh, where you can match him up on these guys and have a reasonable certainty that he's going to get the job done and cover. And when he's not doing that, he's blitzing, and he's a dynamic blitzer. You know, he's the type of guy – who's going to put up, you know, five to eight sacks a year, um, you know, number of pressures whenever he's coming because he's so quick and, you know, he's so smart that he's going to find that hole and make the quarterback pay. I, I just cannot believe that a professional coach watched Montez Sweat's college film and went, there's a linebacker. There's a 3-4 linebacker. Yeah. That just boggled my mind with how they use Montez Sweat. So, you know, they, that staff should have been fired for that reason alone. Just crazy. Um, okay, so understand that. Understanding the, the top of the draft stuff. Um, my biggest concern with the Redskins right now is left tackle. Trent Williams, one way or another, is most likely gone. I can't imagine. It's hard to imagine a scenario when he comes back and lines up and says, "Yay, I'm here in place." Right. So if you, if and again, and they could trade down and end up with the tackle, but assuming that doesn't happen. Now we're going down to round two, round three, um, and if the Redskins are hell bent on finding a starting tackle, who's left once you leave round two? That's a starting, or once you leave round one, that's a starting quality day one tackle. Well, I will say this: uh, similar to how deep of a receiver class this is, it's a very deep offensive tackle class. Uh, the one difference being is, like you said finding that starting left tackle is harder. Some of these guys say an Isaiah Wilson is much better as a right tackle. He's probably a day one starting right tackle and probably, you know, 10 year starting right tackle. Um, but it is a deep tackle class. you got guys like Austin Jackson who could be there in round two. Uh, you guys, maybe uh, Ezra Cleveland from Boise State, Josh Jones. I mean, one or two of these guys is probably going to fall out of round one. We typically only see five, maybe six offense tackles in the first round. Uh, so some of those guys are going to be sitting there. Um, the, uh, you know, if you go a little later, Matt Pert from Connecticut, that might be who you're talking about as a round three option. Ben Barch from St. John's, really small school. He's very impressive down at the Senior Bowl, and I think he's got a long-term future at left tackle. But, again, you're talking about a guy who did not play top-level competition, did not play second-tier or third-tier competition. He held, more than held his own down at the Senior Bowl, but he's probably not a plug and play day one starter. And, and that's the bowl, issue. You're not going against the top, top guys a lot of times. Well, I mean, for instance, you know, Montez Sweat was there a year ago. You're, you are facing some good guys. Uh, this year didn't have as great of an edge class as, yeah. as we've seen in years past. Um, there was no guy like that, so to speak. Uh, but a lot of good second, third round caliber guys. Uh, but you're right. I mean, you're only getting, you know, 20 reps of practice uh, type thing. And, and he got injured, so he wasn't able to play in the game. Um, but, yeah, he what he did was he impressed by showing where he was as a prospect. And, uh, you know, if he's a, a third or a fourth round pick of the Redskins, fans should be happy, but they should not be expecting him to play. I think that's a situation where 
Maybe you've signed a Jason Peters. Maybe you've signed a Kelvin Beecham, some veteran who can handle the job for a year or two. Um, but, you know, it goes back to what you're saying is by not having that second round pick, if you had your second round pick, you'd have a reasonable expectation. Like I said, an Austin Jackson, a Josh Jones, one of Cleveland, Ezra Cleveland. I would almost guarantee one of those three guys are, are sitting there in, at the top of the second round or you're at least in the position to make a just a slight jump up into the very late first round, you know, you trade, you could trade that pick, that uh, second round pick, and a fourth, you know, your late fourth rounder to move up five, six spots in the in the first round to to ensure you get your guy. But uh, the Redskins right now don't have that. Perhaps you get a situation where they can trade Trent Williams for I don't know a third round pick or or more, hopefully, and then package picks up to get a guy. But you're in a bad position. Um, with with needing a, a left tackle. If you need a right tackle, I think you'd have some options there in the third round, but probably not needing a left tackle. Um, we, we, and then, uh, Alex, let's get to your question here. But real quick, we had Robbie Duncan on last week, and he was touting Sadiq Charles as a potential down draft option for as a starter. What do you think about him? I, I think he, he's a good pick. I mean, I, I like him kind of as a fourth-round guy. Um, but again, he's he's not a plug and play starting day one left tackle. I mean, that is that after quarterback is probably the most premier toughest position to play as a rookie. Um, and, you know, I think Charles, again, could be a situation where if you've stabilized with a veteran for a year or two, he could be a fine option. I think he's probably better than Jerron Christensen day one. Um, I think you, yeah. you and I are better than Jerron <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Yeah, day one. Beyond beyond that, though, uh, you know he he's probably your swing tackle as a rookie, and there, there definitely is value there. Um, but I, I think the Redskins need to shoot higher if they don't address this position in free agency. Yeah, and I know they've added added some depth, but that's not really what they needed uh, yet at tackle. Um, yeah, so my big thing uh, looking at the draft has been. You know, obviously we are desperately needing a tight end, but this is not a good class for tight ends in the draft. And it wasn't a good free agent class either, for that matter. Um, I was kind of trying to look early on at some of these guys who are going to be like fifth, sixth rounders and see if there's a under-the-radar guy. There's a kid in Florida Atlantic who at least he's caught a lot of balls, but he looks more like a receiver. Other than that, um, and I think that Bryant is that kid, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Other than that, uh, do Bryant. you have any ideas of some guys who might be under the radar, last day of the draft type pickups that might be able to contribute? Well, and, and first, I think it is worth clarifying, tight end in terms of rookie or early production is something you typically don't get, even from high drafted tight ends. You know, you had the kid uh, um, who Detroit drafted in, in the first round, top 10, TJ Hawkinson. He had a, a hundred yard game week one against the Cardinals, mainly because their secondary was so terrible. I think he ended the year with under 400 receiving yards. Right. Um, yeah, I know he missed a game or two with concussion, but you know, he was a starting tight end and yeah, they of course had quarterback issues with Stafford going down, but that just goes to show like rookie tight ends are extremely rare. It doesn't matter how high you draft them. It typically takes a year or two. I mean, there are exceptions. Obviously, Evan Ingram had like a 700-yard rookie year a couple years ago. Um, and, and we've seen, a, you know, George Kittle kind of hit the ground running as a mid-round pick. But rookie tight ends, you typically should not expect a lot. And that's even if you were to draft a high guy. Um, as for later round guys, you know, it's there are names out there. There are guys who I think could maybe end up being a number two tight end, a guy like Bryson Hopkins from Purdue. Um, I, I do like Bryant Harrison Bryant uh, from Florida Atlantic. I like Adam Troutman. I think those are probably top 75 pick guys. So I think they're third round pick type mm -hmm. type guys. Uh, one late round guy who I'm really intrigued with. Well, two uh, Dalton Keene from Virginia tech, but I really like Steven Sullivan from LSU. Um, he kind of was a hybrid receiver his first couple of years at LSU, and it wasn't until his final year at LSU when he kind of fully embraced the tight end role. And by then they had uh, Randy Moss's kid who about who transferred in and was yeah, above yeah. him on the depth chart. But Sullivan, you know, when he had opportunities at LSU, he showed better as a blocker than you'd expect as a guy who was converting from a receiver. 
he went down to the senior bowl, showed the same type of thing. But he's a developmental guy. He's a guy who's a work in progress. Um, he's got some movement ability. He's definitely got some natural receiving ability. He puts in the effort as a blocker, uh, but de- still develop, very much developing in that capacity. So he's a guy, if you're okay with Logan Thomas being your number one, this guy maybe could compete for the number two. He might be the number three as a rookie. Uh, it's like you said, it's just a weak tight end class. It's probably the weakest tight end class in the last five, six years. It sounds like the Redskins don't have much. Logan Thomas. <laughs> well, that's where I was going with that it. Is. It's like, what other option? You know, we have to be okay with Logan, the Logan Thomas experience, because yeah. it's going to be the Logan Thomas experience. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, okay. So you mentioned when we were doing the poll, you mentioned wide receiver. Um, I think we've all been touting, at least on this show, and this is not a newsflash, the Redskins desperately need a playmaker. Yeah, yeah, desperately, in the worst way. And, you know, the, the most obvious name is Henry Ruggs, you know, who's, I guess, probably a mid-first-round guy, I think. Yeah, um, not give us some unless we somehow get a big trade. So Trade back, right. So give us some playmaker options that could come in and maybe not necessarily be day-one starters, but who's the playmaker they can get – you know, whether in top of the draft, middle of the draft, talk playmakers. Sure. And one thing, and that because I've gotten a lot of pushback also, and I'm sure you guys have heard it as well, is there seems to be this fan uh, assumption that the Redskins found their number two, number three receivers in Harmon and Sims. And I just don't see that. I mean, um, nothing against these guys for an undrafted rookie and a late round rookie. I think they did fine. Uh, but I don't, but if you poll every team in the NFL, and you look at the number two and number three wide receivers, the Redskins probably are in the worst situation in those two departments, especially when you combine the fact that both are missing. So I think the Redskins need to add a wide receiver. They obviously tried with Amari Cooper in free agency, but they, you know, they missed and all they signed is Cody Latimer. So getting a receiver to me is a priority, especially if you want to see if Dwayne Haskins is, is the real deal or not. Uh, I do think, Assuming you're not taking one in the first round, I think just the depth of this draft class is going to push some of these guys who you typically see in your second round into the third round. And uh, three guys, I mentioned kind of three guys in this group of like who I have around 50, who I'm guessing at least one, if not more, fall. And then there's guys below them who I definitely think are would be uh, definite options for that third or the fourth round pick, or of course any pick you'd maybe acquire from Trent Williams. But the three I'm going to mention are Michael Pittman Jr. from USC, Chase Claypool from Notre Dame, and Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State. Uh, all offer a little bit of something different. Um, Brandon Ayuk is a speed guy, a burner. He you put the ball in his hands in open field and he can be gone. Um, he's got good size, kind of a Kind of a one-year breakout guy, but uh, really intriguing in terms of what his upside can be and the type of weapon that he brings to a team. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., he is – I've seen a lot of comps. He, to me, he's a mix of all of them. Um, he's tough. He, he can be physical over the middle, make tough contested catches, size, speed. He checks those boxes. Um, I think he can be your possession receiver – your guy who's moving the chains consistently. Uh, obviously, Terry McLaurin can do that some as well, but we've also seen McLaurin has that deep speed. So I think he can. He and McLaurin would fit well together. Uh, my personal favorite is probably Chase Claypool. There was this weird notion that he'd convert to tight end because he's 6'6", 240. He can run. He, he went to the combine and just blew them away at the combine. He did that at the Senior Bowl as well. This guy is 6'6", 240. Unfortunately, his quarterback play at Notre Dame was terrible. Uh, It's also a very low-volume offense at Notre Dame. Brian Kelly does not run a a pass-happy offense. He does not run a favorable passing offense. So, you know, Claypool was probably a little underdeveloped as a route runner. And, you know, he might need some time to work. But he's a guy he put in extreme effort. Coaches were high on him down senior bowl week. I think he's a guy you want on your team. And he his upside is like a Mike Evans type. Hmm. Um, I mean, that's that, high? The, that wow. well, I mean, Evans was a better receiver coming in and, but six, six, two forty, who runs like a gazelle. I mean, that, that's what this guy can do. Uh, I think he needs good coaching. I hope the Redskins new staff can do that. I think, uh, you know, 
and let me just go back. Terry McLaurin, I knew that Terry McLaurin was going to be a legitimate NFL receiver a year ago at the Senior Bowl because every practice you heard him, not only was he just an excellent route runner, I knew going into that Senior Bowl that he just was a speed guy. I knew he could have pretty much outrun everyone because that's what he'd do at Ohio State. He'd get these big plays and just burn it. I mean, that's what Ohio State did to everybody. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But that's what you saw because they were just so much better than most of their competition. They didn't need to do a lot of like complex route running. And, and of course, he, you know, they had uh, other receivers on that team and they spread the ball out so much he only had like 35 catches. But at the Senior Bowl, he was a technician route running, and he would talk to the coaches after every play. He'd also talk to other receivers down there. I mean, he he was a leader, and I saw that day one of the Senior Bowl, and that's why I was so happy when the Redskins ended up drafting him because this is going to be a locker room leader. I mean, he is going to be a guy who helps other receivers on the team. He's going to help your quarterback. He's going to just help the offense. And I think you saw, obviously, his big play ability also in difficult circumstances with everything else that was going on with the Redskins offense. So... Um, I'm excited for him to be a leader to this team, and I think he could help a guy like Chase Claypool, who did not have that in college, uh, reach his upside. But I, I'm a big believer in Chase Claypool. I mean, he jumped out of the gym and just ran out of the gym at, um, at the Combine. And I think he, show, he showed a lot of work ethic uh, at Senior Bowl week, so I was impressed by that. And while he's a little raw in the route running, I and – for a guy that big, I don't think he uses his size, his size as well as he could. That you can learn. He's got the size. You can't learn size, but you can learn how to use it and shield defenders and jump up. I mean, he can clearly jump. Uh, his, his combine results showed that. So he just needs to know how to utilize it more, and hopefully better coaching can get that out of him. And he's a guy I would not be surprised to be sitting there at the top of the third round. Um Let's do two real quick speed round names I want to throw at you because we need to move on uh, in the agenda. Um, Thaddeus Moss, K.J. Hill. So with Thaddeus Moss, I have a much later round grade. Um, And I know some sites definitely have put him down there also. I think he's more like a fifth rounder. He's smaller. uh, He's not your typical tight end size. Um, He's also not as fast as your typical tight ends. Where he's intriguing for the Redskins is maybe as an H-back role. I think one thing that hasn't been talked about enough is that Ron Rivera and Carolina has utilized a fullback. I mean, they had Mike Tolbert, then they drafted that Alex uh, uh, Ama uh, in the sixth round a couple years ago. They utilize a fullback. Uh, Perhaps they've changed, but I'm guessing they need a fullback. So um, there's not one currently on the roster, and Thaddeus Moss could be that hybrid type H-back fullback a little tight end, uh, do a little of everything. Chris Cooley type of guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also kind of how Niles Paul was used his last couple years with the Redskins. Um, just, yeah, we're, they just do a lot of different things. Um, I don't, I don't know if I want Moss running the football that, you know, Carolina would let their fullbacks run. Um, also. So we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, there aren't a lot of traditional fullbacks being developed in college right now. So I'm not sure what Rivera's plans are, but, I could see Moss filling that type of role. As for K.J. Hill, I think he's a smart player who could uh, be a slot guy. Obviously, he knows uh, McLaurin and uh, Haskins, so there's some benefit there. He's a slot guy. He's a good route runner. He's not a speed burner, but he could be a chain mover. I, I don't I don't think his stock is as high as, say, a, a Jameson Crowder, but he's not far off from that. I mean, I love talking fullbacks personally because Steve knows. Like, there's I have weird things in football I love, and I love a good fullback. So, yeah. Uh, like, I'll tell you, the guy I'm hoping that somehow winds up here is that Bronson Rechsteiner kid. The, you just like his name, Alex. Just uh, admit no, it. I like the fact that he's like 260 and runs a 44. That's what I like. <laughs> um, and he's the son of like a pro wrestler. So, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, you know, I like weird stuff when it comes to fullbacks. <laughs> Stuff that makes no bearing on the football field. Um, All right, so we had some, we did a request for questions from fans because, you know, with so little going on, it helps add content. Um, But Steve got a couple emails. Um, He wants to go through some questions that fans asked. Uh, So why don't we do that, Steve? Okay. Um, This one is an email from Greg, and Alex, I think this is somebody from our our comment section. Yeah. Um, he asked, and you've addressed this a little bit, but let's talk downdraft here. Uh, who's an under-the-radar draft pick at either O-line or tight end, 
who will not only be available later, but who could step in and contribute. So other than what we've already talked about, uh, maybe the later in the draft, O-line and tight end. That's from Greg. Well, we definitely touched base on a couple of these guys. Uh, and, you know, the whole step in and contribute. One thing that I do think the Redskins also could look to address is, of course, guard. Uh, you know, Eric Flowers was a surprise and uh, uh, one of the Redskins' better players last year. And the Redskins are replacing that with a guy who's not really had a great track record. And you hope Wes Martin can step up. But again, we need to keep in mind, this is a whole new staff. Ron Rivera and all these guys don't come in owing West Martin anything. You know, I'm sure they scouted West Martin a year ago, but who knows what the grades were on him a year ago. So uh, West Martin is going to have to earn everything. The, the guy that they signed, you know, he didn't exactly have the most distinguished career so far. And, and that's why he didn't get as much as Flowers, but guard could easily be a hole. So you have guys like... Uh, a Logan Stenberg from Kentucky, a Ben Bredson, a Jonah Jackson, um, Michigan and Ohio State were the last two. These are guys who could be, you know, late third, fourth, even fifth round picks. What about John Runyon Jr.? John Runyon's another one. He could play a little guard, little tackle, obviously good bloodlines. Um, another guy, day three guy, I think fourth, fifth round. Mm -hmm. uh, these are guys who probably could step in. You know, I like some of them a little bit more than I like West Martin a year ago, though Martin held his own uh, as he as he played more this season. Um, he had a, I thought he had a rough training camp, but he looked better as he got into the games at the end of the year. Uh, so I think guard is another area where they could look to find a guy who might need to be contributing early, sooner than we think. At, when it comes to tackle, who Robbie Duncan said, Charles is a guy who definitely has that upside to be eventual long-term tackle. A later round guy, I know some people are higher on him, is Alex Taylor from yeah. uh, South Carolina mm -hmm. State, not South Carolina. So another small school guy. He is massive. He's 6'8". He's got, you know, like 38-inch arms. Like, he can keep guys at bay. He's a little slow off the snap for me, uh, which in college he had no issues because most guys at his level are slow off the snap. And with his you know, just massive wingspan. Nobody could get around him at the senior bowl that exposed him a little bit. Uh, obviously that's something you can work on. So I consider him more of a project. I don't see him as a guy contributing right away. As for tight ends, I mentioned a couple, uh, you know, again, I think you're lock, looking at second or third level tight ends, um, whether it's Moss or Sullivan, uh, the kid from Virginia tech, Dalton Keene, I think um, Kobe Parkinson from Stanford's another tight end who could be like a fourth, fifth rounder that could probably step in and at least be a number two tight end. Uh, I just don't see as much upside with him. So those are a couple guys who could definitely contribute uh, just because the Redskins, as we talked about before, their tight end depth chart is so thin right now. Uh, any number of those types of tight ends could probably step in and contribute it brings the whole fullback thing into more importance in my mind. Cause that means if you can't get a good tight end, have a good fullback up there blocking instead, <laughs> you know, like go with what's available. Well, and, and one guy I will mention, um, he's lined up at tight end. I know he played some fullback also Josiah De, De Guerrero from Cincinnati, probably a six round type guy. Again, he's, like more of an H-back. He's not a fullback you're probably going to be handing the ball off to, but he can block. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know he has some, some experience at fullback. So he could be an intriguing guy. And it, it's not going to shock me to see Rivera to spend a, a late rounder, a seventh, say a sixth or seventh rounder, on a tight end, uh, a tight end who can be a, a hybrid fullback. Okay, I've got one more real fast, um, mainly because this is a truly nutty question, and I appreciate nuttiness. Uh, and out of respect for the the guy who asked it is one of our another one of our longtime guys, Dave. Dave writes this, and again, just be prepared because it's crazy. Uh, would a trade back to Miami at five, and then a move back up to three, be a with Detroit, be a worthwhile option? Would a, how would a scenario like this uh, look like? I think that's just freaking nuts. Personally, is there any value of, of that? What do you think about Dave's point? Well, what I'll say is this. The Redskins did that exactly in 1999 with the Ricky Williams trade and then moving back up to get Champ Bailey. Uh, obviously, they gave up a down. lot of the assets. Uh, and they did. They get, they got Champ Bailey from it. They gave up a lot of the assets they got from the Williams trade to package to move back up to get Champ Bailey. But Bailey was obviously worth it. Um, 
never should have been traded away as much as I love Clinton Portis. Uh, the the Lions could absolutely consider something because they're in a position where they need defensive help. And if they're sitting there and quarterback goes one and two, could they use Chase Young? Sure, but they could use Simmons. They could use Akuda. They could use Derek Brown. They need defensive help. So if they move back to, say, five, they'd probably be on board. My thing is the Redskins just have so many needs. Uh, you'd be giving up so much of the value. You'd probably be giving up 80, 75% of whatever extra picks you're getting to move back up, 75, 80%. So it's like you're then only moving back one spot and maybe, let's say, getting a second rounder in return as opposed to getting an extra first, second, and third, which is probably like around the minimum right. you'd get from a Miami scenario. So is that worth it? Maybe, but I look at it personally in kind of the same way that I feel that Detroit should look at it Sure, you might miss out on Chase Young, but I don't feel Chase Young is the best guy. Like I feel like Simmons and Akuda, Worfs or Wills at number five, sign me up for any of those guys. I assume that it would be a situation of you're trading back, getting five eighteen, like you said, a second and third, and then you're trading five eighteen at least, probably yeah. plus your own. Maybe you do your third and another third. To keep the I don't know what it would be, but yeah. Well, I didn't read all of what Dave wrote, but yeah. the rest of it, he, what he's getting at here is he's trying to ensure that the Redskins get either Isaiah Simmons or Chase Young. Yeah, that listen, was the point I, of I've what he's asking. <laughs> a bunch of mock drafts where I've tried doing stuff like that in my life. It, it's it's not easy. Like you know, Detroit. If if Young is there, it's going to be very hard to get Detroit to trade back. Exactly. Maybe exactly. The Giants, and, but even then, I doubt it. Yeah, and and the thing with the Giant, and I think. A lot of people have the fear of going back to five and it goes quarterbacks one, two, young, and then Simmons at four. And, you know, again, I will say it. If they end up with Jeffrey Akuda, that is one heck of a consolation prize. You know, I think people are very much underselling Akuda. To me, Akuda is in the same ballpark as Jalen Ramsey, as a Patrick Peterson. I mean, this guy is an elite shutdown corner and the Redskins don't have cornerbacks. Um you know, Kendall Fuller was a nice pickup. Darby was a solid, cheap signing. The Redskins corners, again, another position. If you look at the top three corners around the league, the Redskins grouping is mm-hmm. one of the bottom five, sure. if not the worst. Yeah. So, uh, uh, especially and, after trading Dunbar. Yeah. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and just going back to like the Jalen Ramsey thing, that was the same year that uh, Joey Bosa was taken by the Chargers. You know, who would you rather have, Ramsey or Bosa? Uh, I mean, I think it depends on what your needs are and where you are set at other positions. But from the Redskins' perspective, I mean, you know, in that, you ask a Redskins fan, who do you want, Ramsey or Bosa? I want Ramsey. Um, Listen, our problems are solved. They've got Ronald Darby, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Shoop, always good to have you on the show. Uh, You know, we have you every year pre-draft. So, you know, it's always great to kind of get your two cents on it because I think you bring some solid grounded opinion since you know you probably do more mock draft stuff than anybody out there (laughs) and there's not an i think it's a definitely (laughs) yeah yeah probably definitely i don't know i i I picture adam schefter just sits there doing mock drafts adam schefter's too busy on the phone that's true being on the phone yeah all right shoop thanks again for joining us oh thanks for having me on guys always fun to talk yeah you have a great day you too Steve, I always like talking to Steve with you, Steve, and you know, just too many <laughs> it's so Steve. confusing. That's that's why I had to say in the beginning. I'm just going to start calling you Shoop. <laughs> um, always great to have him on. Uh, but I want to get back to something because we forgot it, and you brought it up at the end of the interview. We didn't talk about the whole Darby signing uh, last week, yeah. even though it happened last week. Um, I'll tell you the truth. I'm kind of apprehensive about a lot of the moves we've made at defensive back so far this offseason okay you know what are your thoughts on it well um i think well in terms of darby generally speaking i kind of agree with you i think i don't think kendall fuller is a panacea you know to the defensive backfield shoop is absolutely right i mean they they're in desperate straits they could really use jeff okuda but in terms of darby um darby's the guy who came out of college with a near elite athletic profile. He's right. fast. He can jump. He's not a complete freak of nature, but he's he getting close pick? to. 
or was second round? Pick? I feel uh, like I'm he second. Was, yeah. yeah, I believe he was second round pick, okay. but um, he's not a total freak of nature. But he was getting close to it. His problem is he's he's been bitten by the injury bug a lot. Right. He's one of these guys that's missed multiple seasons because of injury. Um, I, I I think that it's weird because with his athletic profile. Injury aside, you'd think he'd probably be better at man coverage, but I think Darby truly is a cover two outside corner guy, you know, who's going to have a stick in the flats because he's not, you know, I don't know how good he's going to be at deep field pattern matching and stuff, particularly if he's not what he used to be Mm. in terms of injuries. You know, if you're like in a cover three scenario where he's got the whole third of the field all the way back. Sure. I don't know if that he's going to be very good at that. Uh, and, because and that's interesting because from what everyone's kind of, you know, reading the tea leaves, this is going to be a cover one, cover three team. Like th- that's going to be the base formations for a lot of. Well, and I might be totally wrong. I mean, the scouts yeah. are the ones, you know, or the pros at this, but uh, I think it's kind of grasping at straws, you know, a little bit. They needed somebody. They needed a veteran. This is a roll of the dice guy. Cause don't forget he was horrible last year. Just terrible. He was bad God last year. He's been awful. hurt. Uh, yeah. Like if you look at where a lot of these, you know, mock offseason sites kind of have him ranked, he was fairly low. I, I, you I, know what this signing is? This signing is when you're playing blackjack, you're sitting on 16, the right. dealer's showing a face card, and you go, just screw it. We got we got to take do another it. card. Yeah. yeah you that's what this is. Yeah. The odds are that you're going to bust. Right. And that's what Ronald Darby is. So, but, you know, but they needed a, a competent veteran presence. You know, here who, uh, you know, can at least come up and play football, mm-hmm. you know, because who, who, who the hell else do they have? I mean, the, you know, Josh Norman is gone and he wasn't all that good anyway. You, Quentin Dunbar, unhappy and gone. You know, yeah. you got Kendall Fuller, who's a slot guy. I think we've established that. I mean, you know, they could play him outside in a pinch, but his highest and best, he's a slot guy. So then you're down to like guys like Danny Johnson and Fabian Moreau. So uh, they really kind of needed somebody, and Darby is like, like I said, let's you know, let's take a hit on sixteen, and hopefully we get a five. <laughs> so here's my thoughts on Ronald Darby. It, like, it's a very high risk position uh, to or to be in, and the thing that aggravates me is, I think you're doing that already with uh, Kendall Fuller. It's a high risk, you know, signing. I know fans love him, but he's not, he's not that. You know, like, he had a bad couple years in Kansas City. There's guys who are still out there that I think would have been better signings. Uh, I I think, uh, who was it? The kid from uh, Tennessee who played with the New England Patriots. Why am I blanking on his name? Logan something. He was really good last year. I don't know why he went unsigned as long as he did. Yeah, no, Ryan Logan. Ryan Logan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like Ryan Logan. I think Ronald Darby is kind of, um, or not Ronald, I think Kendall Fuller is kind of, I, I'll give you another analogy. This is the the girlfriend, you know, or boyfriend who, you know, you go back to a second time because you're misremembering the past. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, and it remembers, and, it sound, and it's better in your head than it was at the time. Sure. That's kind of Kendall Fuller, because Kendall Fuller wasn't that good here, remember. He's gotten better, obviously. He played with the championship team. But Kendall Fuller ain't all that. No. You know, I mean, he kind of struggled in, uh, you know, at times to find a position in Kansas City. Yeah, because know, to sure, he around might... a whole bunch. Yeah, and even, you know, that knucklehead, what's his name, the other former Redskin. Uh, thank you. I kind of outplayed him, Yeah, you know, in, you know, in Kansas City. So he might end up being the slot guy. But he's not the the answer to the to the question. So they desperately need a high draft pick. I mean, I would be ecstatic, all things considered, in a vacuum with with them pulling Jeff Okuda in, because Ronald Darby sure as heck ain't the, ain't the answer no, either. No, no, Darby's you know, a, uh, your your gamble. The good news about Darby is they're not spending a lot of money on him. I don't have the details of the contract, but the rumor is that it's a one year, four million dollar deal, and so they probably gave him a signing bonus of, mm-hmm. you know, call it like a million. You know, or so, you know, so that's probably all that's guaranteed. It's not a huge amount of money and it's only one year deal. So they recognize this is kind of a prove it year for Darby. It's the, hey, if you want to rescue your career, come to Washington. That's what's happening with Ronald Darby. Right. So, Um, yeah. Do you want to give your cap thing real quick? Yeah, real fast, real fast. Cap thing. I've got just about everything. I'm I'm down to only of the guys they signed. They've signed. I'm down to missing uh, Darby's deal. Um, 
Cody Lattimore don't have that one. But everybody else, I believe I have. And you have a guesstimate for Darby, at least. So Yeah, $4 million for Darby, but his capital will be less than that. Um, so right now, I've got, minus those two players, $27.4 million in free space. So if you add, number one, the rookie pool in, the rookie pool is going to be about $7 million. Mm-hmm. Assuming that if they trade around, it'll be different. And before anybody asks, the reason why it's only $7 million is that there's a rule of 51 offset. The The last guys aren't going to count anyway in the offseason. Right. So it's about $7 million. So they're down to a, a, just a smudge over $20 million. You throw in Ronald Darby and Cody Lattimore, both of which are going to be fairly – Lattimore will be small mm-hmm. um, probably. So we're probably looking to be somewhere in the $16 million range most likely is free space right. if you account for the rookies. If you don't account for the rookies – Probably call it twenty two, twenty three million. And this That's also kind of, is still with Trent Williams on the books. As it's a, still Trent Williams on the books, yeah. and it's also with an estimate about the final salary cap number. I'm shooting low, okay? Sure. That's with me assuming it's one hundred ninety seven million. It, you know, the estimate was up to as high as two hundred one million. So there's a variance in there. That's why if you ever see anybody out there say, "I know the number for sure," they're wrong. They don't yeah, because. Yeah. It's a cap as an estimate, but that's that's where we are. I, I will update this at some point before this show is posted sure. on the site. All right, so we had two more topics to talk about. They they are almost IJB topics in a way because yeah, they uh, are. Yeah, they, they're <laughs> off the field kind of things. I want to t- touch on the quickest one first, which is that uh, the Redskins under I, I I saw some word that Rivera might have been behind this apparently, but the yeah. Redskins are forgiving. Six hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars that the city of Richmond owes them right now. Um, Steve, you're shaking your head. I don't know. If I don't think you're six hundred fifty thousand. No, no, I, I was drinking, but uh, water for the record. Yeah. But I don't think it was six hundred fifty thousand. But keep talking. I'm gonna okay. verify. So, well, anyway, they're forgive the city of Richmond owes them some money uh, that has to do with the whole you know training camp thing, and the skins are basically saying because of what's going on everywhere economically. They're just going to forgive the debt that the city owes them, which, you know, seems like a very un-Redskins move to me. <laughs> and you got to figure this is because the new regime is here. They're trying to put a good foot forward, partly, uh, you know, distance themselves from some of Bruce Allen's moves. Uh, but there's one year left on the Richmond deal. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit of a surprise to see that the Redskins would just say, eh, no, you guys can keep your money. Um, well, I think this is Ron Rivera kind of flexing his, flexing his muscle, you know, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, this, it's, the story is, I'm not finding it kind of doing it on the fly here. So it's a, it's I don't think it was, money of whatever it is. I don't think it was 650,000. So don't hold us to that number. But point is what this is doing is this is Ron Rivera saying, this is my team. And we're going to get us out of this obligation because I might just do what I want. I mean, that's kind of what it is. And, and, um, the, the, you know, to the Redskins, it's not a lot of money, relatively speaking to the city of Richmond. It is because Richmond has suffered under this deal. I mean, the Redskins didn't do anything wrong. They signed a contract and it didn't work out for Richmond, you know? So uh, that's just uh, kind of the way it goes. Um, if you ask me, I mean, if it's up to Ron Rivera, I bet the training camp is just going to be at Redskins Park. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't I think mean, Rivera. I don't, I don't, I don't know if they, don't, what they did got them out of the last year. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's going to get them out of the last year. I mean, if if you erase the compensation, the city of Richmond will probably let them go. I mean, that that's what. There's no other reason to do this. I mean, it could be that. Here we go. Um, it could be. Uh, I mean, remember when they signed this whole contract, there was an issue where the Redskins were no longer able to do a lot of joint tryout type stuff or joint practice type stuff. Yeah. And I'm wondering if this would maybe be, hey, we're, we're going to go up and play in Baltimore for a couple of days. You can't sue us now, you know, because. Well, yeah. And the number is one hundred and sixty one thousand, by the way. This is. Um, OK. Yeah. I'm looking. This is NBC 12. Is that the local DC station, NBC twelve? No, I think that's no, it's NBC Rich- twelve. That'd be Richmond, DC. Yeah, okay, it's four. Richmond, and and so th- that station has an article that claims that it's one hundred sixty one thousand, which is more what I thought it was. See, I, um, I, I pulled mine from WTVR, which is NBC si- or CBS six Richmond, which said six fifty. I just sent you the link to that, by the way. Okay, 
but okay, so, so we don't it. we haven't heard the number either way. So we've quote, we've quoted one news site that says 161, one says 650. Right. Either way, they've waived the the final fee of the final year. So I'm assuming to me this is a way to say hey. If we don't want to be there, we're not going to be there. It could be what you're saying, Alex, which is we're going to be there, but we're going to yeah. travel to hopefully not Baltimore because we don't want anybody to get shot. I mean, well, some you know, others. They, they do joint practices. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the way it's always worked with other teams is they'll do it like one city one year, one city another year, and they flip back and forth with the team. Uh, the Redskins have done a couple, but they've never been able to go anywhere. I mean, I'm fine with I, I don't. I think Richmond's been fine. I know it hasn't been good for Richmond. Um, but I don't mind having training camp there. Um, it makes you and Jamal drive and, down to Richmond. But I, I've said summer. before, I actually really like going down there for camp. I, I would yeah. rather go to Richmond than go to, uh, you know, Ashburn, because at least Richmond's interesting. <laughs> Ashburn's know. kind of pretty far out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> a- Ashburn's just a boring <laughs> suburb that, you know, if we turned it back into farmland, I'd be happier. So, you know, like, I, I kind of like going there because there's a bunch of good restaurants with close by and good breweries and you know i love my brewery so but you know i'm i'm in a minority of redskins fans who actually enjoy yeah. going there yeah um, now to be clear the 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 original deal was eight years 2020 was supposed to be the last year right and so what they have waived here is the 2019 payment and the 2020 payment both apparently according to the nbc 12 uh, article okay interesting yeah. All right. Well, we'll see what it means in the end. I think it, you know, it, who knows what it means. We'll find out. Let's talk about the other business side thing that I found that was interesting. That is that Darius Geis is being sued by his agent or former agent um, for a half million dollars, which seems like a lot of money to sue a third round pick or a second round pick over. Um, so the the backstory of this is that when he was being drafted, his old agent company which was called fatty mikhail uh they loaned him 129 dollars, got him some endorsement deals and then he jumped ship to the young money agency which is i guess little wayne's company uh and they're saying well you still owe us this money we got you all these deals it it, it seems like a lot of money because i don't buy that darius guys can bring in a half million dollars worth of endorsements out right out of college. So I'm Um, I'm wondering about that, but well, okay. So yeah. And young money is a little Wayne. Okay. That was what I was wondering. Um, so it's, it's not a half a million dollars in endorsements. What it was is the loan, the pre-draft loan. And by the way, for those of you who are wondering, pre-draft loans are very common, right? Very, very common. This is like every draft get up to that much money of almost 200 K, but, Basically every draft pick who, you know, unless you're um, like, who's that fool with Cleveland, Johnny, a guy like yeah, Johnny Manziel, who's an, uh, already yeah. wealthy. Yeah. Uh, Josh Rosen family, you know, a lot of family money. All these guys basically borrow money from their agents. Um, so it's not that unusual. So of the half a million, 191,000 was the loan that is apparently not been, allegedly not been repaid. Right. And then the rest of it was from. Endorsement deals, and what they mean by endorsement deals is that the agent negotiates these endorsement deals, and so then he gets a cut, right. a certain percentage of the deal. And so, um, you know, you're talking. So he's alleging three hundred nine thousand is his unpaid cut from various endorsement deals. The article that we read cited a Nike and Hyundai sure. as being two deals. I didn't know guys was even an endorser of Hyundai, but. Um, see, that's apparently why I kind of find it hazy. I'm like, one, I didn't know Darius guys was doing Nike. I could see, but Hyundai, really? Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I just had never seen, you know, never right. seen it. Look, this is, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's Darius guys is one of the big disappointments in the last couple of years. I hope it works out for him. You know, when he's here, um, we, lo- we, I really loved him coming out of college. Mm-hmm. We had Ernest Biner on this show, that draft before the Redskins are drafting him. Who's, who was touting Geis's praises. And if anybody knows running backs, it's Ernest Biner. Right. He told us that on this show. Um, but all these injuries, you know, nonstop, um, I, he looks to me like he's getting caught up in the the lifestyle, quote unquote, a little bit too much. We just by all his social media and, yeah, a lot you know, of social he's media obs- with him lately. 
Yeah, and he's with rappers and all of that. No, there's nothing wrong with you know being with rappers or whatever. But point is, it seems like his focus is a lot non football. <laughs> You know, to me, I might be totally wrong, but that's I got to be honest and I got to say what I feel on this show. And that's what I think. And then you throw in a knucklehead thing like getting sued by your agent. There's just it seems like there's more drama than we really wanted out of him. I thought that he would be the opposite of drama when he came here. Instead, what we've had is injuries, social tons and tons of social media posts. And now he's getting sued. Um, I, I think, you know, he's going to be gone. If it, if he can't stay healthy this year, he's not going to be a Redskin anymore. Yeah, that's why that, think. that's nothing to do with the off the field stuff. That's just right. If you don't play, you ain't you ain't going to be here. And um, don't get me wrong, because there's a lot of things that guys can do that's worse than getting sued by agents and posing and photos of some rappers. Don't well, misunderstand me. I don't have a problem with it. You could be getting arrested. He's not doing oh, any of that stuff. You no, could no, have he, baby mamas chasing he, him all over the place. He's not he getting any in trouble. Trouble. This right. is a financial thing where yeah. W- well, one. Maybe it's just me. Like, I, I don't know if I would ever want to sign as a football player with rap stars agencies. I would think you'd try to find. Well, like, the I mean, Little Wayne but... is not in the room with him. I know. I'm assuming he's got a agency. real agent. Yeah. 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 But I, I would he's just not think you one. would want to say, who's the agent for, I don't know, Adrian Peterson? I think I'd rather have like Drew Rosenhaus, perhaps. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Of course. Rosenhaus yeah. being one of the, the big names. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's just kind of a combination of things. I'm get, I'm just, I'm kind of getting over, I'm kind of getting over Darius guys. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to say because between the injuries and then the constant stream of social media posts mm-hmm. and now he's getting sued and he still can't play and all of this. And, you know, they brought in guys like if he doesn't watch out, Bryce Love might be better than him anyway. Yeah. Bryce yeah, yeah. Love might, if Bryce careful. Love is healthy. Yeah. Bryce Love might outplay him. You know, with all, every all all variables being ev- being equal, Price Love might be better than Darius Geis anyway. Sure. Uh, I, I but again, I just still I find it hard to believe that. All right, so 500k, 300 of which is just the agent's cut of the supposed. De- like I'm 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 mind blown that a second round pick is getting that much money in endorsements. He was a high profile guy though, and Nike so. don't throws money around like it's water to to these guys you know they'll yeah. sign nike signs people to like really long deals yeah i do know that N- nike will like sign anybody deal. yeah they'll sign anybody and like i don't know what they even do with these football players because they're not they don't have shoe basketball shoes no i don't really know what the football players are doing for them other than just nike being able to say you know this football player is on the nike roster i don't know what other benefit they're getting out of it personally but. That, that would actually be a fun thing to like <laughs> dig into like what is the point like you know, <laughs> yeah. Why when, are they when paying? Archie signed guys. with Where Adidas. They... Remember, we saw him wearing Adidas stuff nonstop. Right. But and he had a shoe at one. He had like a shoe at one point in time shoe, that I don't he was think seemed very popular. Stuff in practices and had to cover yeah. the low labels and things like that. But Nike owns every NFL player already. So why would they bother signing any of them? <laughs> yeah, I don't quite understand it. And just to be clear here, because somebody's going to criticize me for it, I don't care. The, the rapper thing is – all I mean is it seems like he has a focus that is a lot of not football. That is my point. you mm-hmm. know. And so don't read into any of that, into anything else but that. I just think it seems like with him, it's a lot of stuff that isn't him running a football. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and it, now in his defense, and he's pointed this out on social media himself. They don't have a playbook to study yet, so there, there is. Well, only, I'm not talking about yeah, just this year, but it's just been like a never-ending stream of stuff oh, from him. So just yeah, play, yeah. dude. Yeah, Run the yeah. ball. Don't get hurt. Period. Yeah, yeah, I think the "don't get hurt" thing would be my number one. <laughs> well, absolutely, of course, of I, course. Just be healthy. If you were healthy and running the ball, I don't care who you hang out with, as long as really? he's not getting you arrested. I don't care. But when it's like everything, you add up everything, I'm just getting tired of Darius guys a little bit. I yeah. just wish we could see him run the ball consistently for multiple games in a row and not get hurt. Yeah. Let's uh, start even with if that. He was only getting like 750 a season. I, I would be happy. You know? Anything, yeah. please. Cause he's got so much talent. He does. Is the thing, you know, so much talent, so much talent. He just can't stay on the field. Yeah. All right, Steve, do now we have anything else to cover at this point? I think we hit everything on my list. Um, I think so. You know, it's um, – the bulk of free agency is over. They may have, you know, a few, you know, long-shot signings here and there. Some but basically right – yeah. 
Yeah. yeah well, I mean, that'll come after the well, draft, but b- yeah. basically it's, it's the draft or bust here. So, um, I continue with my thought that the best thing to do, like Steve Shoup, I have a friend in this, you know, now Steve Shoup also said on our show just now that he thinks trading down is probably the way to go. Yeah. That's the way I read what his comments were, at least. Right. So I, I fully agree with him. I, I love Chase Young as a prospect, but I'd give him up on a heartbeat if it would get a, you know, Isaiah Simmons plus a second rounder plus some other player that we could desperately need. That's more value to the Redskins than just bringing in a pass rusher who is going to be only marginally better than what we have now, at least in the short term future. I, I and I'm not. I've never been against the idea of trading down. I just think you need to make sure you're getting appropriate value for the number two pick. Well, let's talk about that real fast. Okay. The the number two pick on the draft value chart. And yes, it's just a chart. Okay. You all can feel free to think whatever you want, but NFL teams do at least pay some attention to this. The draft value part chart says the number two pick is worth 2,600 points. Mm -hmm. And if you add up 2,600 points in the various scenarios, what you basically have is a high first round pick, a second round pick, and then one or two lower round picks. And one of those, you know, if you go into the future, the points go down. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's if you add, if you, for those of you who it's like, in the words of Burgundy blog, I'll quote them for the Chase Young or I'll swig a jug of Clorox crowd, you know, who are saying three first round picks and all that. Hopefully the Reds can get that, but that's way over 2,600 points, way over. That would be a dramatic overvalue for the pick. So I don't think they're going to get that. I think you need to expect first rounder, second rounder, and then two more lower picks. And I would counter that by saying, I don't, I, I hate to say it, I don't care about the chart. I care about what other teams have traded for that pick in the past. And are, there have been three trades up to number two in the last 10 years or so. One Most of them of was them, exactly what I said. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just, but two of them are literally te- them going back one spot, which makes it a little tough because I don't think Detroit's yes. going to trade. Probably not. And the other one is us trading up for RG3 in 2012. Which was an overvalue, yeah. you know? So there's not a lot of there's not a lot of uh, history for this, unless you really go there, back on the not years. great. Yeah, there's not a lot of great history to base it off of. That's the no. problem. No. Because we're not going to go back to three. And <laughs> the, the crazy thing is, for that number three, there was one of the trades was like a two firsts, a second, and a fourth, or something like that. And then the other one was... You See, could... that would be close if the four the fourth isn't worth much. No. You no, know, no. So that's pretty close, you know, because like if you get like say number ten, that's gonna be I don't have the chart in front of you, it's gonna worth something like maybe seventeen hundred points. Yeah, so yeah. then you get a lower one that's worth six hundred, seven, six, mm-hmm. five, six, seven hundred points, and then you throw in what'd you say, a third? You know, no, it was two I think it was two firsts, a second, and a fourth. So I, I don't quite okay. remember. And so the second puts you a little bit over twenty six hundred yeah. and the fourth is worth like a hundred points or right. something. You know, so it's a little bit over, but that's in the ballpark. That's right. not and then the that. The other one was, I think, the what was it last year, San Francisco, Cleveland, uh, where they went know. back one spot, and yeah, uh, it, it was whenever Cleveland got um, their quarterback. You know, so yeah, you know. well, that, they've done that like eighty times yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the yeah. past. <laughs> but <laughs> but so, point yeah. is, I guess it's my very, point is, it's very tough to figure out what a good value is. Yeah, you know, if you go with 2,600 points, it's basically what I said. It's it's a high first, you know, a second, a third, and one other lower pick or a pick in the future. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just think, to summarize it, I think for those of you who think, you know, I would only trade Chase Young because he's a generational talent, which the word is just makes me sick to my stomach at this point. Um I think you're overvaluing the pick if you're expecting the Redskins to get like three first round picks. That is not going to happen. It just isn't. No, I think it, I think the asking price I would I've always stuck with is I need two first and a second. That's because that's you're not, not that's trading reasonable. for Chase Young. You're trading. They're trading for Tua. They're trading for a franchise quarterback. Yeah. You got to keep that in mind. Yeah, no I, one and, but that's reasonable. For Chase Young. If you get a high first and then a low first and a second, you're in the ballpark. You know, <laughs> it's a little high, but that's in the ballpark. But more than that, just isn't going to happen. But somebody this week actually told me that Chase Young is a Hall of Famer. That was a new one. That's you know, in in, in, in yeah, one of my potential. Men- Anyone has the potential. No, this was like 
you don't pass up on a Hall of Famer. That was the that was the comment. It's like, man, you guys have really gone off the deep end over this dude. Yeah. If he comes in here and is even mediocre, there's going to be people ready to jump off the Wilson Bridge oh, over this. Well, there's that too. <laughs> but it's yes, I'm trolling you to some extent, but I do honestly believe the Redskins could do things that will help the team better than Chase Young. Well, but at the same time, if they do a trade back and none of the guys they draft pan out, a la it's, the Rams. It's all a crapshoot, man. You yeah. saw my article I posted on Friday. I went through the history of the top 10. I'm going to spare you all the deal. Take me too long to explain. But the bottom line is it's more likely than not that the pick is going to be average right. than even above average. Even in the top 10, the odds are really low that you're going to get anybody who's like, wow, multiple time all pro franchise guy. That's like very 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 low percentage yeah, even I, in the top 10 you may remember i i went in depth and looked at a lot of the corners uh separately yeah. or after you yeah. initially posted it. and yeah really there's maybe two maybe three right. guys out of the 20 so corners who were drafted that are hall of famers it's like right. champ bailey uh jalen ramsey maybe it's still too well, champ old. bailey was drafted in the 90s so he wouldn't have been included in my choice oh no he was 2000 wasn't he we're gonna, I, we, but we'll my, go the study I, still, yeah, I'm it's, gonna, it's rare. yeah, go ahead. It's yeah, it's rare very to, rare to get a true Hall of Famer. Um, but anyway, oh, well, that should wrap up this show because I think we're gonna be waiting. He was over. 99, he was 99. Oh, it was 99? Okay, yeah, I thought he was 2000. All right, but let's wrap up the show. Uh, it's been, I think this was a good one. We had Shoop on, don't know where Jamal is. Hopefully, he's <laughs> not like got the zombie virus or whatever. Jamal's out on a bar, bar crawl right now. <laughs> How all the bars are closed? <laughs> just uh, <laughs> the sarcasm just like completely miss you sometimes. It does. It does from you. <laughs> no, from me only because <laughs> it's so dry, so it's so dry that nobody even notices. <laughs> right, it's it's British humor. It's just <laughs> frozen dry. My uh, British accent sucks though. <laughs> yeah, mine is. I can do some okay, but well, we won't get into that. No. Thanks everybody for joining because we just kind of rambled. I <laughs> uh, hope you all stay safe out there and we only got a month till the draft so yay bye bye